Hey everybody, welcome back to the hangar deck. Um, just going to go over briefly with you what we're going to do here. So here's the upper torso of my German soldier. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look right quick and see if there's any flash that we need to take care of. And it looks pretty good. Doesn't look like there's any that we really need to worry about. There might be a little bit there on the neck, but that we might be able to get away with that. Actually, it won't take much to take that off. Got a little half round file here, so we're going to work on that just a little bit. almost even less here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this basic flesh tone here. It's called Flat Flesh um, Tamiya XF15. I'm going to shoot his face and head and then I'm going to shoot his uh, hands. And the reason why I've elected to do that is I'd like to have a nice, smooth uh, base to work with when I start shading him in. So we'll see what that looks like here in just a minute. Okay, as you can see, I finished up with his face. And I just sprayed the um, Tamiya X15 flat flesh on his face, back of the neck, behind the ears, whatnot. Now I come in with the XF93 and the um, XF92 and we'll start doing some shading of his face. And um, we'll leave the flesh tone as the highlight and then we'll, you can already see just how the natural light kind of gives us hints where we want to shade and uh, we'll follow that when we shade and then we also did both hands and that's just just to spray on with the airbrush and then we'll do a little shading on the hands too okay well that gets us started and um, I'll bring you back in uh, when I start doing the shading. Okay, moving right along here. Hopefully you guys like my uh, Hillbilly camera holder here. It's just basically the Tamiya um, car body, spinning car body holder. I'm probably going to hit it sometime. <laughs> Make it go sprawling. Um, but that's what I'm going to use to hold the camera while I'm trying to do this. Okay, so we've applied the um, base coat basically to our face and now we're going to come in with some Tamiya it's called um, light brown um, dark RSC DAK 1942 XF 93 it doesn't really matter you know what they call it it's the right shade and you can experiment you can make shades lighter darker by adding paint so we're going to go in here and we're just going to hit the bottom of the cheekbones or right below the cheekbones and we're going to go right underneath the chin right underneath the mouth I mean on the chin and any of these we can lighten up or darken up as we go and we're gonna go underneath the neck we're gonna go behind the chin strap because we're gonna recolor the chin strap anyway but what we've done is we've just kind of darkened that face a little bit so our faces um, are contoured and they capture the light in areas and they absorb the light in areas and they get dirty if we're in combat uh, if our little guys in combat you know they're going to get dirty in different areas 
So now we're going to go in, put a little bit right above the eye. Maybe a little bit right below the eye. A little bit beside the nose. And what we're doing is we're just enhancing these features. This guy's already starting to take on a little depth. Okay. Now we're going to clean this brush. I use a little alcohol to clean my brush. Spin the brush in the alcohol, tap it off. I used to, when I clean my brushes, I used to spin them in the towel, and now I just wipe them off. Maybe go back and forth, but I don't. I do maybe a 45 degree spin, not a complete 360 or even 180, just so I don't twist those brushes too much. Okay, now we're going to go to the next color, which is XF92 Yellow Brown. Okay, whoops, better shake it a little bit first. I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush, and I'm going to hit my, uh, get my little uh, eyes on here. Get this positioned on the camera. Now we're going to go in here right by where the, the creases would be. Where the cheeks meet the mouth. Put a little crease in there and we're going to go a little bit more. Got to blend that in. If I can get that into focus there. Underneath the eye. Now there are some guys that use uh, oils to do this, and and that's okay. There's a lot of mixing that you can um, mixing you can use that will enhance your efforts. Take a Q-tip, kind of blend that in a little bit, i.e., wipe it off. Blend it in a little bit. You can use, um, I'm going to use this Q-tip, kind of lighten that effect a little bit, so it's not quite so harsh. Now, when you look at this really close, maybe it doesn't look as good, but then when you take your um, take your hood up and you move the piece a little bit further away from you then it looks a little better and at any time we can go through and we can take this um, the flat flesh that we used as our base and we can darken it or lighten it and go over these and bring that subtlety in so we're just getting started okay we'll do some more a little bit later Okay, so now at this point, we're going to stop and evaluate where we're at. We've got a uh, shading in underneath the cheekbones, underneath the mouth. And it's probably a little bit too pronounced. So to remedy that, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two colors... And we're going to mix a drop or so of each of them together. And we're going to create a third color. So one of the things I use for mixing palettes, um, I travel quite a bit. And I get these hotel key cards. And, um, you know, not necessarily endorsing a particular brand. And I put some tape on the key cards. And it becomes very easy to... Uh, mix on that tape and then when you've done enough of it 
you just peel the tape off like this and you put on more tape and you have a new surface to work on so I'm not going to do that right now uh, I'm just going to grab another one that I've used that one had super glue on it so we're going to take a drop of this um, XF93 and mix a toothpick in here just put a drop on there doesn't seem like a very much but heck you don't need a lot and then we're going to use a different toothpick cocktail stick whatever you guys want to call it wherever you're from and uh, try to get that in focus there we go and this is, oops, better shake this pretty good. This is our uh, XF15, or our flesh tone color. If you happen to be my flesh tone, if you're a different flesh tone, then it would be a different flesh tone color. Okay, I'm going to put a drop of that in there. doesn't really matter at this point. Um, how close you come to whatever color you want you just need a different shade we'll mix those two together and that is somewhere in between the flesh tone and this slightly darker tone that we used before oh sorry that one there okay get my uh, old man eyes on here and now we're going to take a little bit of this right here we're going to dry brush it on which means we're going to take most of it off and we're going to go in here and we're going to almost cover up that dark line that we did earlier because we want to make that a little bit more subtle so your homework in all of this is next time you go grocery shopping or to the mall or people even go to the mall anymore, I don't know. Go to the hobby shop. You're going to people watch a little bit and you're going to look at people's faces and you're going to see that shading that happens. And who knows, you know, maybe you even want to walk up to, if you're a bold person, some people are bolder than others. You want to walk up to somebody and say, hey, you know, I like your face. And they'll kind of look at you kind of funny and say, oh, well, you know, I'm not asking you for a date or anything, but I, I like the way your face tone looks. And uh, I would like to take a picture of it because I do models. And... Um, I want to use your face tone variations as kind of a guide, if you will. And then if you don't get arrested, then you can take a picture of their face. If you get arrested, you ask the police officer, hey, I kind of like your face. <laughs> you kind of know where we're going with this. Okay, so we're going to go over that a little bit. Get some of that paint off. Okay, sorry I may have been off camera. If I was, I apologize. So that's kind of what we've got there. We've just subtly working that in. Covering up some of the darker areas with our mixed color that we did. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to try doing the lips. Those are a little bit tougher um, because we're going to create a whole new color. We're going to take some of this base color that we did and some red. And we're going to make some nice pink. So once again, I'm going to take a little bit of our base color on a toothpick drop it right in there like that now anybody know the correct way to mix paint 
Johnny back there in the back. Oh, yeah, Johnny. Yep, you're correct, Johnny. There is no correct way to mix paint. It's whatever way you do it. And if it works for you, then it's the correct way. So we're going to take that base, that XF15, and we're going to take a little bit of um, Master Modeler's Insignia Red. And we're just going to barely dip this toothbrush in, or toothbrush, good lord, listen to me. This cocktail stick until we get the proper shade that we want. I think we need a little bit more. So we're going to turn this toothpick around. We're going to drop that in there and it's probably going to be too much. Maybe not. Get it all mixed in. Yeah, it's not too bad. We can tone that down a little bit later once we get it on. Okay, look at there. I cut myself. Actually, not really. It's all paint. Okay, so we're going to go for our smallest piece here. Our smallest brush, sorry. This little guy right here. Hit this bottom lip. I tell you right now, we're probably going to have to go over this a slightly darker color, kind of tone that down a little bit, but that's okay. This is probably the most artistic part of modeling is doing faces because you will mix colors, you will do all kinds of things with colors that you don't necessarily do when you're painting like a 1944 version of the F6F Hellcat that flew off of the USS Bunker Hill in the Battle of Saipan that was navy blue top and bottom. You know, you're just, you're basically going to be doing the navy blue and some weathering. But faces are a little bit different challenge. Okay, now that looks pretty stark when you look at it really close under the camera. But if you have to take my word for it, if you get back away from it and you look at it, it's not too bad. But we're going to tone that down some more. We're going to come in here with our XF93. And our XF15. We're going to mix those up. drops each on a card and mix those together. I'm going to go with two drops. I need to mix that. No, I didn't really want to do that. I'm going to go over here. Go with two drops of the XF15. Okay, three. We're going to go with one drop of the XF93. 93? Yeah. I'm going to mix those together. Kind of come up with another color. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this lip color that we did and we're going to mix it in there. Kind of come up with a whoops, yeah, make sure we get our right lids on. It's 
so there are color i mean it's you're coloring the face but then you're also blending the colors that you've done so we're going to dry brush that color in there a little bit the drier you brush the more of the blending you're going to do By blending, what you're doing is you're covering up the base color, the color that you put in first with another color, but yet by doing it dry, that base color, if you will, is going to show through. And we're going to dry brush those lips a little bit, kind of tone down that rouge. Contrary to popular belief, the German Wehrmacht did not wear uh, lipstick. Looks a little better. Now, I think I overdid the shadow on that below the eyes, so we're going to work on that a little bit. Kind of cover that up just a little bit. Hopefully, whatever you guys learn here, you guys will become much better at this than me. I mean that sincerely. And this is just kind of wet your appetite. Get you in the mood. Get you to get out there and try it. Not too bad. A little bit more on here. Kind of tone down that shadow a little bit. more blending right at the edge of a of a, um, a raised area usually the shadow will be a little bit darker right at the edge and it'll fan out as you go past that that's looking pretty good I take my um, I take my magnifiers off and just look at it with the naked eye with the back a little ways it's looking pretty good it's not too bad at all okay so now we're going to give this guy some eyebrows let me clean my brushes right quick So, if you watch some tutorials, you will notice that um, all figures are blank canvases, and you are just coming in and painting that canvas, and it is very much open to your interpretation. So typically whatever you come up with, if it looks good to you, it's great for me. Okay, we're going to give Hans, we'll call this guy Max. We're going to give Max some eyebrows here. Just a little bit. That's no, not too bad. Don't want to get too carried away. Okay. I'm going to go in here with this same color. It's a darker brown. I'm going to hit the inside of the ears a little bit. Give them some depth. See, that's the thing, you know. If everything is the same color, there's no depth. So by changing these colors... We're giving a little bit of depth to the figure. Okay. When you're doing this, 
I want you to stop frequently and remove your magnifiers and look at the pic look at the face from a little bit further away. Okay, now we're going to go for a much darker. A lot of times I do blue eyes. I don't know why. Um, I think maybe the reason why I gravitate to blue is because blue sticks out. You know, it's a little bit easier to see that pupil when it's blue. Um, this guy is going to get brown eyes, brown uh, pupils. Uh, before we do that, though, let's take a little white. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this video, I talked about overdoing the whites of the eyes. So we're going to take... Uh, we're going to take some white and this is uh, X2 it's um, of course the gloss which I don't like but for some weird reason uh, XF2 became very hard to get there for a while uh, the flat white became kind of hard to get don't know why um, apparently um, in the uh, in the world of paint, um, gloss white became hard to get. I don't know. Maybe there was a, um, a blight on the gloss white trees and a bunch of them died. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. But there's our white. Now we're going to add a little bit of this base coat that we did for our... our um, skin we're going to mix that together see how that looks we don't want it to look too jaundice so i think we're going to have to add a little bit of white to that lighten that up just a little bit i have to get some more toothpicks out here pretty soon cocktail sticks whatever you want to call them okay that's probably well into the enough region. Okay, let's see how we look here. I you think that'll be okay? Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Now, um, do you know how it is that you go about uh, securing your bottles so that they don't tip over and spill everywhere. I don't know about you guys, but the way I do it is I cap, recap my bottle every time. And that way if I dump it, nothing gets out. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get this guy in focus here. I'm just going to make a pupil. I'm sorry, pupil of an eyeball here. Not too worried about the shape. Just kind of worried about... Uh-oh. Siri says my time is up. Okay, so now we have his pupils, or not his pupils, the whites of his eyes, if you will. So I'm going to get that to come into focus. Sorry about that. And that is all we're going to do with that. And then we'll come in and we'll put a pupil in there. But we don't want to go any lighter on those whites of those eyes. Because if you go any lighter, then what's going to happen is um, it's going to be too washed out. And it's going to be too, too defined. 
Okay, we're not anywhere close to being done. Um, we're going to keep moving here. But I'm going to pause this video and I will come back to you guys in a little bit. In the magic of video, you will hardly notice I'm gone. All right. Okay, so I'm going to going to give our German grenadier guy uh, some pupils. And um, he's almost got some pupils right now. Looks uh, pretty good, but we're going to define those a little bit. You can go with any color, uh, as I mentioned before. You can go with blue or, or, you know, you can go with black as far as that goes. You know, there's people out there that their iris is such a dark color, it's almost black. We're going to give this guy brown. And we're just going to define them a little bit there. A little bit more. And this one over here on the left, his right, I may have overdone. But that's okay, because we can go in and cover that up. Okay. All right. I'll clean this brush real quick. So we're going to go in here with a little bit of this color here. And we'll uh, define those pupils just a little bit more. Just takes a little bit. This other one looks pretty good. Okay, I think that's got it. So now we have a we have a completed face as far as all the features are concerned. I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow under the nose. A little bit more shadow in here inside the nose. If you feel like maybe you've picked up too much paint on your brush, don't be afraid to go over and hit something off to the side get some of that paint off of there and then dry brush that shade just a little bit more
Okay. <clears throat> I'm kind of liking that. Now what we need to do is do the chin strap and the hair. It's looking pretty good. Okay, let me clean this brush and I'll show you the brushes that I've used. I picked these up in a hobby shop in uh, Orlando, Florida. So we'll start with the smallest one. This is the finest tip one I have and it's holding its shape pretty good. This is going to be great for faces or instrument panels or whatever. And it's a Tamiya modeling brush HG and then there's the item number right there 87153 87153 should you choose to get one this is the next size and once again it's a Tamiya modeling brush HG and 87154 so that one was 53 this one's 54 and then last but not least is the biggest of the three and they all come to a nice sharp point I kind of like that again it's a Tamiya and this one is 55 five. 87155 okay all right, now we're going to give this guy brown hair, but we're going to give him um, hair that's... I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to use this brown, and we're going to cut it with a little bit of this brown. So it's going to take a couple of drops of each so that we have enough. Uh, right quick, we're going to change off this tape. Just because we're getting so much, so many spots on there, it's hard to tell what's going on. So that's what it start looked like to begin with. As I'd mentioned, I travel quite a bit, and uh, one of the problems that I'm going to run into as far as a supply of um, those uh, keys is more and more places that I stay they have electronic check-in so you use your cell phone for your key which means um, one of two things either one I'm gonna have to start using my cell phone to mix paint or they do offer you a hard key too so I may have to take a hard key as well Nah, you can reuse these hundreds of times so it's not a big deal okay shake this for a second You just wipe or uh, stir that toothpick around and then pull it out. It'll have a drop or two of paint on it. So this guy's going to be kind of a dirty blonde. Blonde German, who ever heard of such a thing? Okay. That should do it. Okay. All right, so that's what our hair is going to look like. All right, so we're going to start with the larger of the two brushes. And we're just going to come in here. Now I will say that I feel like, you know, this, this figure is from the 70s, I do believe. Might have been the early 80s. And I think to me as figures in styrene or 
I don't know what, you know, the big guys aren't resin. I think they're styrene. I think their detail is a little better. But this isn't bad, but like there's really not a lot of um, detail to the hair. You don't see any lines in the hair. And you know, that's not a big deal, but would have made it a little bit better. Okay, now I didn't take as much hair as I, or hair, didn't take as much paint as I thought. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take what we have already, and we're going to add just a little bit of black to it, and that's what we're going to do our chin strap with. We got our X18. Now that's a gloss, but I think it'll be okay. I have to refill my toothpick cup. Sure, this will be more than enough. I really like this color. I may go ahead and do the boots too. In the carry all load bearing straps. Okay. Now, I think I'm use the next size down. So here we go. I tend to hold my breath when I'm doing these finer details. I guess uh, if I wake up on the floor, I'll know that I held my breath too long. Some of you guys may be competitive shooters and you know that the two breath rule. You take two breaths and then the second breath you hold it. And that's supposed to steady your heartbeat. Which in turn steadies the, the weapon. And then you squeeze the trigger. And downrange the round goes. Okay, not too bad. Get a little off camera work there. Turned out all right. Man, he's looking really good. Looks even better when you look at him from a little ways away. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is do the uniform all the details on the uniform. That's really not what this video is about. This video is more about faces. So I think this is going to be it for this video. It's been long enough as it is. And um, I'm going to give you one more shot here in just a second. And uh, this one will be from a little bit further away. So maybe you get the benefit that I'm getting with my... Um, magnifiers up. So hang on just a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's our here's our German guy. Um, 
he kind of deceptively looks like he's in the North African desert, but he will be painted out as a, a grenader in um, Panzer Grenader in Europe. Looks like I might need to do a little bit more work on that chin strap now, now that I look at it. But I think he turned out pretty good. Now, I'm telling you right now, you guys can do the same thing. You guys that that haven't ever done faces, just look at this video, watch half a dozen others, and give it a go. Like I said earlier, if you decide you don't like the way it turns out, prime over it, start over again. you got nothing to lose. Okay, well that's it from the hangar deck from this guy. Uh, on this German, the rest of it I'll be doing it in quiet. Uh, maybe listen to some good 70s. Or uh, might tune in Max's Models uh, YouTube channel. Or one of the other YouTube channels. Listen to something uh, out of one ear on Curiosity Stream or something like that. So, uh, you guys uh, do what you can, stay out of trouble. And we'll see you next time. Signing off from the hangar deck. Adios.